Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about areas and volumes. To start with, we're gonna talk about area. And the area of an object is a two-dimensional measurement. So your units should be square inches, square feet, square meters, square centimeters, and so on. Two of the most common formulas that you're going to be dealing with are area of a rectangle and area of a circle. Let's do an example of each of those and talk about how those formulas work. So for rectangle, the area of a rectangle is simply length times width. So if I had a rectangle that had a length of two feet and a height of one foot, the area, you could either write with the units in the formula or you can leave them out and understand that your final answer will be in square feet. So we're going to get an area of 2 times 1 which is 2 feet times feet is square feet. You can use an exponent to represent that so you could write 2 feet and put an exponent on the feet so that means 2 square feet. We could also find the area in square inches but be very careful how you change from square feet to square inches. It's not the same as changing feet to inches. Let's change our units to inches first and find the area, and then we'll talk about how we change the area units. I could change these dimensions to inches before I start. So two feet multiplied by 12 is 24 inches. One foot is 12 inches. So the area could be found taking 24 inches and multiplying by 12 inches. When I multiply that, I will get 288 square inches, which again could be written with an exponent on the unit. This area is 144 times greater than this area. So although there are 12 inches in one foot, there are 12 squared square inches in one square foot. So in other words, there are 144 square inches in a square foot. So just be aware of that if you're actually changing your area units. The other thing I want to mention is that both dimensions have to be in the same unit before you can multiply them. So if this was in inches and that was in feet, you would not be able to find the area until you change both dimensions to the same unit. Let's take a look at finding the area of a circle. The area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Area is how much surface there is. If you're interested in knowing the distance around a circle, that's called circumference. And circumference can be found by just multiplying the diameter times pi. Area can be found by squaring the radius and multiplying that by pi. So for example, if we had a circle that had a diameter of 10 inches, the area could be found by taking the radius. If the diameter is 10 inches, the radius would be 5 inches. So we're going to take that 5 inches and square it. And again, you don't need to put the unit in if you understand that if your unit is in inches, your area will be automatically in square inches. So 5 squared is 25 times pi will be 78.54 square inches. So far we've been talking about areas of two-dimensional objects, flat objects. So let's talk about how we find areas of three-dimensional objects. Let's talk about the two most common solids, the rectangular solid and the cylinder. We are going to talk about how to find the volumes of these objects, but right now I just want to focus on the area. So the area is how much surface is there. If we were going to make a rectangular solid out of steel, for example, how many square feet or square inches of that material would we need to make this solid? So we have to look at the flat surfaces and find the area of each of those flat surfaces and then we add all of those up. So first of all, the area of this rectangle would be length times height. Now if we think about the other end of this rectangular solid, we have another the rectangle with that same dimension. So there's two of those. 
Then we look at this side. Its area would be width times height. And, and we have another rectangle on the other side. So there's two of those. Then we have the base, which would be length times width. And the top, which is also length times width. So there's two of those. Provided that it's a closed rectangular solid, we're going to have six sides to that rectangular solid. If it has an open top, we would only have one length times width, and that would be the bottom. So you just have to pay attention to how many surfaces you're dealing with. When you do this calculation, your area is going to be in square feet or square meters or whatever your unit is. If you are dealing with metric units, I did a video on metric area, so you might want to take a look at that video as well. Now, to find the surface area of a cylinder, it's a little tougher because a cylinder it doesn't have the flat surfaces that a rectangular solid does. A cylinder is curved, so the way we have to think about it is if we were to cut that cylinder and lay it flat, what shape would it be and how would we find its area? So if I had a cylinder and I were to cut it and lay it flat, it's simply a rectangle. But and in order to find the area of a rectangle, we need to know this dimension and this dimension. So in terms of our cylinder, the length is going to be the circumference of the circle and the width of that rectangle will be the height of the cylinder. The circumference is found by taking pi times the diameter. So that's the circumference of that circle. And if we multiply it by height, that's like the length of the rectangle times the width. So this part here, gives us the curved surface. If it's a closed cylinder, we also have a circle at the bottom and at the top. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. And because we have a bottom and a top, there's two of them. If it was a pipe, we wouldn't have that area because it would be open at the, both ends. So again, you have to think about exactly what surface area you're finding. Here, these are the four walls. And this is the top and bottom. So remember that when you're finding area, you're finding a two-dimensional measurement. Your area should be in square units whether it's square inches, square feet, square yards, or whatever. Let's do an example of each of these. If I was gonna find the area of this rectangular solid that has a length of three feet, a width of two feet, and a height of one feet, I'm gonna keep my dimensions in feet, and therefore my area will be in square feet. I'm not gonna bother putting the units in, it just makes it look a little messier. So this area will be three times one, and there's two of them. The side area will be two times two times one. And the base, which will have an area of three feet by two feet, and so will the top. So there's two of them, three feet by two feet. So we're gonna get six plus four, which is 10, plus 12, which is 22 square feet. That would be the total surface area of that rectangular solid. If I was asked to find the surface area of this cylinder, I can just plug into my formula. Pi times the diameter, which is two feet, times the height of five feet, plus two times pi times the radius squared. If the diameter is two feet, the radius will be one half of that because the radius is from the center to the edge. And so I put one in for a radius, and now I calculate. So pi times two times five will be 31.41, well, 42, plus two times pi will be 6.28. And when I add those values together, I get, when I did the calculation, I got 37.699. So I just rounded that off to 37.7 square feet. Now let's take a look at the volume of rectangular solid and a cylinder. Calculating the volume is actually much easier than the area. The volume is simply length times width times height for a rectangular solid. 
and it's a three-dimensional measurement, so you should have cubic feet, cubic inches, cubic yards, and so on. With a cylinder, the volume of a cylinder is pi times radius squared times height. Again, in cubic units. Let's do some examples. If I was asked to find the volume of this rectangular solid, it would be three feet by two feet by one foot, which would be six cubic feet. Again, you can put your units in or leave them out and understand that your answer will be cubic feet. To find this volume, diameter is two feet, radius is one foot, so the radius will be one squared times the height of five feet. Our volume will be 15.71. You may encounter a situation where you're given the volume and you're asked to find one of the dimensions. So I'd like to do an example like that. So if we were given this cylinder, told the diameter, we didn't know the height, but we knew the volume, we could actually find that height. Diameter is five inches. So the radius is 2.5 inches. Volume of the cylinder, is pi r squared times height. So making sure all of our units are in sync. In other words, if our dimensions are in inches, our volume has to be in cubic inches. So make sure that you're consistent with your units, and we are. So we can put 1,000 cubic inches in for volume. Radius is 2.5, and we want to find height. In order to isolate height, we can do one of two things. We could get one number here and then divide both sides by that number, or you could divide by pi and then divide by 2.5 squared. It's up to you what you prefer. I will combine and get one number here. When I multiply this, I get 19.635. So 1,000 will equal 19.635 times our height. In order to isolate height, I'm gonna divide both sides by this value. So that it cancels here. Now I've written this down as 19.635 but I'm going to use the actual number on my calculator so if you use the rounded off number you might get a slightly different answer. So if I take 1000 and divide by that number on my calculator I get 50.93. I know this volume is in cubic inches, my radius is in inches, therefore height has to be in inches. So the height of that cylinder has to be 50.93 inches to get that volume. Know how to work with your volume and area formulas to find areas and volumes, but also to find other dimensions. Yeah.